Good morning, Riley. How are you doing today? Good morning. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Do you go by Riley Tate Wilson? Because if, if the music doesn't work out, that's a good radio name and you could be doing what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, I do go by Riley Tate Wilson. Uh, Riley Tate just casually, but I don't go, I don't ever do Riley. I, I, I love the rhythm of that. Now, is that the Southerner coming out in you? Because, I mean, I mean, the, the, the name and then the middle name usually go together. Yeah, d- double name is definitely pretty Southern, but um, I, I don't know. I, a lot of people just call me Riley, which I don't like. I, I like I like the way that my name flows, especially if I want to do music because there's there's I haven't ever encountered another Riley Tate Wilson, but I, I've met Riley and I've even seen Riley Wilson's. I love the idea that you're visualizing that because it's the same thing with a name like Arrow. I just sit there and go, okay, is there another Arrow out there? What What's going to happen? You you can't stay in the future when you're creatively involved with, with what's going on. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't thought about that. But yeah, I definitely am trying to keep my name, you know, it, I, I don't necessarily have a stage name, so I really want my name to be recognizable. So I think having the double name and the last name yeah. is more recognizable than just Riley. I got to tell you, I, I've got some serious love for Montgomery. And the reason why is because it was one of the very first cities to pick up my syndicated show. And I have always, always, always loved that city for doing that. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, there's there's definitely, I listen to the radio all the time. Uh, I have a record player in my room that has a radio on it. And sometimes I just turn it on and see, see what's going on. But um, I... Uh, I, there's, there's a lot of really cool radio stations down here that I've been listening to since I was really young. Because it's authentic. Dude, I mean, every every but thing and everybody in Montgomery is so authentic. They're not candy-coated with plastic bathroom mirror Aww. smiles. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, definitely... Not, people are... they. <laughs> that, that's not just Montgomery, but in the South. It, it's very like... A, um, it, uh, people say what they mean. People say what they want to say. Yeah. And sometimes it sometimes it gets them in trouble. It gets me in trouble sometimes. But yeah, I, I in the long run, I think that's better than people just saying what you what they think you want to hear. Now, being here in the South, we have Bojangles. Has Bojangles opened up near you guys? Um, yeah, oh. we have we have a Bojangles. Nice. Uh, I haven't been. You know, I haven't. I, I have never tried it. I don't know if it's good or not. But we have one like like two miles. From my house. See that that so that to close. me that pretty to close. me is southern. I see when when we talk about being in the south and stuff like that. There are certain things that nobody else in the country has, and it's like, yeah, you're from the south. I love oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bojangles, yeah, Bojangles, Milo's, yeah. Um, yeah, places like that. You and I have something in common, and that is is that we created drum sets when we were kids. I had my Lincoln logs, I had my boxes, my garden hoses, shingles from the roof. Oh, what cool. what all did you create your drums out of? So yeah, that's funny. I was just talking about this. Um, I had, I had a little metal dog bowl that like my <laughs> dog used to eat out of that I turned upside down, and I had Tupperware containers and like pots and pans, and I played with chopsticks yeah. on them. Like not good at all, but I like beat the crap out of that thing yeah. and followed my mom around the house. Did did your parents accept that side of your musical thing? Because my father never understood why I was pounding on boxes, and but but I love I hear music all the time. Yeah, so my parents were super supportive of, of that. My mom was my mom was like, "Lord, make this music to my ears," because she wanted to support me. But it, I could I could understand that it was very annoying to hear that. But yeah, they were always my whole family has always been super supportive of me, no matter what I've done. Um, I think that's super important to have. Yeah, your mom. That support you. Your your mom created that keyboard for you. Do you still have that? I mean, you by now you should have framed it and hung it on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, we don't have that anymore. That was just a cute story that we had. But uh, yeah, I she drew a little keyboard for me on cardboard. On she drew a keyboard. I can't speak right now. On cardboard for me, is a, and I played it, and I swore that I could hear the notes. Yes. Um, and yeah, that, it, it was it was super cool. I, mm-hmm. I wish I still had it. When it comes to musical instruments, do you have something from the past in the way that you know that it's speaking through you? Because I have a piano from 1868 in in my in my dining room, and it, it just I love touching that piano and I love listening to it, even though it it sounds nothing like modern day music. <laughs> yeah, I I love you know I have my dad's old guitar from when he was a teenager. He mm. was um, 
he doesn't have he doesn't have any rhythm, but he he could play lead guitar just by soloing a lot. And he had I have his old guitar. Um, it's got like the the fretboard is has got all the the wear and tear in it yeah. from being played for thirty years, and uh, the it's got the body's gotten like distressed up where it's been leaning on like on, under your shoulder and like on your knee. Um, and some, just the fact that like this instrument has been being played for like 25, 30 years, I, I definitely get what you're saying about like an old instrument. It, it, it sounds like it's, it's got a story behind it. Oh my God. Guitars speak loudly. And it, like with my Ibanez flying V that I bought when I was 16 years old, that guitar, stra- oh, wow. that guitar strap broke and it fell to the floor. That mark in that guitar is still there. And it, it, it just takes me into that moment of what it was like to be a part of a garage band. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm looking for, I, I finally started getting money from the show and can start like upgrading from my old music stuff, but I, I want to buy a, like a, a, a used vintage guitar, like tube amp, mm-hmm. because things like that have, uh, they've been like the tubes have been used for so many years and they, they have like where I just think they're, they're gorgeous. Like old guitar amps are just, they're beautiful. I want to buy one. Those amps are so important because my wife's ex-husband is, is a record producer. Plus he was also a studio studio musician. And I kept going, Bruce, why are they hiring you? And he says the amplifier dude, they, they want the sound from my amplifier. Yeah. That's, that's definitely very sought after to have like the old, you know, Fender box or Marshall amps that have, that have this like warm, gritty, tone that is just unique to buying a new amp now with you producing music are you using uh some tape or what are you doing or what what are you using pro tools what do you got going on um so i i I wish i started on a different daw uh than i'm using now i'm it works for me it's i mean it's worked it's 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 called fl studio Hmm. um and a lot of people it's it's a lot a lot of people use it it's mainly used um in rap and r&b it's like the industry standard for like rap and r&b and things like that but um i i i wish i could upgrade to i i wish i started on like logic or pro tools um ableton even um because that's just what is mainly used and if i'm working with someone if i'm working with another producer i could send them a track instead of having to I could send them a whole project that I'm working on instead of having to send them individual audio tracks from my project. Um, but it there's it's not that I, I don't think that there's a reduction in like the quality of music that I can make with this. It's just like that not as many people use this. So when I'm working with other producers and songwriters, I can't just send them ideas as easily as I could if I was using a different doll. Riley Tate, don't you love that journey that you take when you're when you're sitting there in that chair? Because I mean, it's like your imagination is in a completely different universe, and and you know what you're looking for, you know what you can bring to it. But it, there's just some some sort of innocence that's right there when you're about ready to hit play and record. Yeah, for sure. I I I love I love I, I, this is this is a niche thing. I don't know if a lot of people would get this, but just like the like staring at a blank project in a in a doll like the fact that i could make absolutely anything right yeah. now like i could make any song that comes to my mind right now and have it recorded in in a way that i could listen back like i don't know just just the fact that that is possible mm-hmm. like with technology is kind of crazy if you think about it that like me speaking can be put into something and then play back to me and me playing my guitar can be put in put through these these wires into my DAW and play back to me and I can mix different frequencies and do all these really intricate things is is super cool and I, I, I love producing my music. It's it's one of my favorite things. Oh, it's 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 such a connection. It's a collaboration with the creative side as well as the 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 walker of the planet. In other words, you're like a silent wolf. You see things happening in life and then you bring it to life on inside that that, that music machine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, are you afraid of AIs? Because I mean, look at what they're doing with speeches and other things in life, and and I feel like that we're going to start hearing some AI music that has nothing to do with humanism, but rather that computer. Yeah, you know, I've actually I've experimented a lot with using AI in my own music, yeah. um, not to like write, but there's a lot of useful ways to use 
AI, like uh, chat GPT. I know a lot of people have been talking about that mainly a lot now. Um, but like I, I could put in there, like help me generate um, a jazz chord progression in E flat. Yeah. And it can, it, it'll list, it can list hundreds of different chord progressions that I could use in E flat. And like, that's, these are chord progressions that have been used. Like this is, I don't think that is necessarily something that AI is doing that only AI can do. Cause you could find that in music books. You could find that in a lot of different things, but it's making it more accessible, like on a whim. Cause when I'm in a creative process, I don't want to have to Google a ton of things or like, I don't know. Sometimes I just, when I'm writing, I want a quick chord progression to write to instead of having to spend hours coming up with the perfect sounding thing. Um, but when people start using it to like write full songs, mm -hmm. um, and I, I know right, right now I'm not really scared of that cause they don't sound good at all, <laughs> but, um, uh, down the line, you know, things could get more advanced and there could be people who just have no talent that are now writing. I say writing in quotes, but making music just through AI. How do you keep the perfectionist at bay? Because when, you, when you're in control of, of, of the engineering that's happening, I mean, that perfectionist can sit there and say, let's tweak this, let's tweak this, let's do this, let's move this. Yeah, I, I, I've I definitely struggled a lot with that. Um, mainly, I'm just trying to make every, I had this idea that it, my music has to sound, you know, aesthetically and quality wise, how these million dollar songs sound mm -hmm. in these studios and when that's not true and there's songs that are there are artists out here that are not in those studios that don't have their songs sounding like that that are very successful um and i i think that just the realization um that my music doesn't have to sound like that mm -hmm. is it's really good and it's helped me just do what i want to do instead of do what i want other people to be you know be impressed by like oh his vote his hit this mix is amazing just mainly other producers that no random people wouldn't notice but like other producers would know like oh this 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 mix is amazing when really I don't have to do anything for anyone else because if I like how it sounds then that's all that really matters. Did you ever go through a stage where uh, I, I, let me let me set this up in a way that the, I had a I had a, a national consultant tell me quit teaching people how to edit their voices for commercials. They need to read it all the way through because you're teaching them how to quit. As an editor and when when I do things for vocal you know, to vocalize for commercials, I do edit. And and so but as a performer and you're in that editing chair, how do you go do a live show like NBC's The Voice when you know that that if you make a mistake, just stop. Oh yeah. Um, I see. I don't know if I can, I'm, I'm having trouble figuring out your question, what you're saying. Yeah. Because how do I, yeah, you don't, do you, don't you don't, you don't, you don't, yeah. You don't stop singing when you're on NBC's the voice, but I know as an engineer, when you're sitting there in that room and you've got oh, the power yeah, yeah, yeah. of editing, I, I, if I make a mistake, I stop and I just redo it. So now you got to take it to a live stage and it's like, Oh, I don't have that net underneath me anymore. Yeah. So the way, yeah, they, they definitely, um, do a lot of things. I'm sorry. That was really loud. Um, they definitely do a lot of things to my voice. If I mess up, mm -hmm. um, minor things you know like if, I, if i'm a little flat on a high note they'll they'll tweak it a little bit but if i if i have a large mess up it, it's just there mm -hmm. so i guess i gotta just forget that it happened um and just move on to what's next because if i focus on the mistake i just made then the rest of the song could be bad after that mistake and isn't it odd what we feel when something did not go right? I mean, it's like we instantly feel it. And and like you said, you've still got to go on. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I It's uh, it's it's definitely something I've had to make sure that I, I don't have tunnel vision on a on like a note that's coming up or a note that I just missed a few notes back because I'll I'll just stop thinking about the rest of the song when really you could you could make up for it if you just, you know, put your heart into the rest of the song because people you can do so well with the rest of the song that people forget about that note that you miss. That's right. That's right. Well, as, as a program director told me one time, he says, you know, if, if the listener hears you make a mistake, they're going to say, wow, he's one of me. And, you know, because, you know, we all sing out of tune. We all we all miss a beat. But you know, and so listeners will, which they say is the reason why the music of the 50s and 60s is still around, because it wasn't perfect. And we accept that. 
Yes. Yeah. There's, I, I, I definitely see what you're talking about there with there's, there's artists like even uh, Lady Gaga at the Oscars singing um, her song from uh, the Top Gun movie Yeah. where I don't know if you've seen that, but where she, um, it was not perfect performance at all. And she did that on purpose. She, she wasn't wearing any makeup. She was sitting yeah. in on a bar stool at the Oscars of all places. Um, and she just had a, a you know a little shirt SM57 in her hand and was singing this song and it was I don't know it was just something about the fact that an artist that big at a plate at a, on a stage like the Oscars is singing with you know no tuning just a a dry vocal and giving a a performance instead of just a perfect vocal tone. Oh, you speak my language. A performance. That's like these people that'll say, yeah, I've got a gig tonight. You what? I have a gig. You have a performance tonight. It's not a gig. Get you. That means yeah, you don't yeah, care. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. So now, what, what, what are you going to do when Niall reaches out to you and says, hey, uh, Riley Tate, I, I, I need you to produce my next song? <laughs> uh, see, <laughs> if that happened, I would probably... I couldn't take that on. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I could take that on. And he's he's working with some of the best producers in the world, and I, I'm definitely not up to that caliber yet. But maybe one day. So, do, do you see yourself as as being a Calvin Harris or an Ed Sheeran? Because what you're doing is everything that they're doing. I mean, you are the whole deal, dude. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I I want to I want to be. I think I, I want to be all the things. I want to be a producer, songwriter, singer, actor, yeah. <laughs> all the all the things. Um, I, I think I have a I think I have a, a lot of passions, and I need to kind of pick pick. I don't know, not necessarily push the other ones away, but pick one and focus on it. And I think that singing, and I think mainly the goal is musical theater. Mm. Uh, what I would love to do is because the singing and acting together and just. Uh, that side of performing is really where my heart is and really what I would love to do for the rest of my life. Well, this generation loves their musical theater. This, I mean, it's, I was so afraid when I was a kid that all of those, those movies that my parents were watching were going to go away, but oh my God, no, man. I mean, people love music and acting in the same flick. Yes, they definitely do. I, I, I'd love, the dream is Broadway for sure. Oh man, what a journey you're on, dude. Where can people go to find out more about you and to really tap into your growing success? Um, so I have an Instagram. That's where I, that's where I update all of my stuff and all of, you know, my musical journey and tease little music releases and stuff. I post a few times a week on there and it's at it's underscore Riley Tate, Riley spelled R Y L E Y. That's it. That's it. You yeah, when I saw that you, the way that they spelled it on NBC's The Voice, I went, that's original. That's not how most most people spell it. <laughs> yeah, my uh, I'm thankful for that. Are you practicing your signature cuz you know you're going to be signing a lot of stuff? Yeah, I've, I've already been signing a good, a good bit of things. So yeah, my signature is kind of down packed now. Oh my God. Dude, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? All right. Thank you so much for having me.